the let's go let's hop over to the NBA. Lot a lot of stuff going on in the NBA. We have Kevin Durant who had his debut with the Suns in a 105-91 win over Charlotte tonight. And obviously Charlotte is a trash team, so you know, didn't have to do much. Booker was actually the star of the show, 37 points, 15 of 26 shooting, and uh just, you know, just putting up crazy numbers. Kevin Durant in his debut, 10 for 15, 23 points, and two of four from three. Six rebounds, two assists. I think that's a pretty damn good debut. A couple blocks in there as well. But oh, I'm looking at this team, and I'm just like, if he starts meshing well with this team, Scotty, I'm, uh, I mean, I feel like this is the only team that really just terrifies me when it comes to the Western Conference. Now, do I think that they have some time to, they, they need to still have time to mesh together? Sure. But, man, if this team starts clicking sooner rather than later, I don't know, man. I'm not feeling so great about the Nuggets' uh, chances as I did before this trade took place. Yeah, I mean, obviously, it's a it's a solid roster. Listen, he went and played against... Uh, there was a reason he started against the Hornets. Yeah. Hornets are an awful team. And, and on top of that, they just lost LaMelo, LaMelo Ball. Uh, for the season, so they're even worse than they were, and they only got 20 wins as we speak, and they just lost Lomelo. This was a calculated like game where like, hey, let's get comfortable, let's make sure we win. Um, listen, can they absolutely? Absolutely, they can be very, very dangerous. This game means nothing to me. I, I'm not worried about them against the Hornets. I worry, like, let's figure out what they are as they move forward against some actual real like competition that will challenge them. Um, Durant's a phenomenal player. Sometimes he's a little hard to play with. Um, They don't listen. uh, Chris Paul is like their point guard, but that's concerning to me at this point. Like he's not that dude anymore. Um, Can't defend. And and quite frankly, is just not, not the dude he was. So um, I worry about that. They're basically, they're basically down to three guys. In my opinion, Chris Paul can throw some assists. Don't get me wrong, but it's Durant, it's Booker, and it's uh, Aiden. oh my goodness, eight, yeah, DeAndre Aiden. Thank you. Um, those are the three guys, and we'll see where they can take them. We'll see. I just don't think in a shortened season, if they all come back next year, I'd be way more worried. But in a shortened <laughs> season, the the way the Nuggets play within the confines of each other and know where everyone's at, they yep. know like the ins and outs. Like, I I just feel like they're the better team. Yeah, agreed. I think that's one. That's the that's the biggest thing that I have against Phoenix this year of why they wouldn't make a run. Right. Uh, Off season with those guys, you get prepped and you get ready and you feel each other out. Next year, yeah, maybe Phoenix is better than Denver. I don't know. Yeah. Uh, you got LeBron James on pictured here. He is in a boot. He's out for a minimum of two weeks based off of the fact that he uh, the, from the Grizzlies game. Now, if there's one team I'm rooting for, like the Lakers, it's the against the Grizzlies this year. <laughs> I love I just, you know, with John Morant and all those guys like talking what they're talking all season long. I just, you know, but uh, talk about ugh, we got, I got so much to talk about with Pat stat padding and everything else. Um, LeBron calling out Ja for getting staying out there in a late game, trying to get an extra rebound for a triple double. That's stat padding. That if you want to talk about stat padding of the NBA, it's staying in a in a blowout game to get one rebound. Uh, there, uh, Ja. But uh, either way, Lakers chances take a massive hit. They, I mean, they're done at this point. I mean, there's no way he can. The Lakers can stand to have him. The way season he's had carry this team most of the season because you have Anthony Davis out all the time. Now, Anthony Davis is the guy guaranteed. He was, he, he was out tonight. And he was out tonight. Along with D'Angelo Russell. <laughs> Which is in a must win. I feel like <laughs> Chris, they won. <laughs> it's crazy. They fucking won. It's wild. They won with a starting lineup of Malik Beasley, Dennis Schroeder, Mo Bamba, Jared Vanderbilt. And Who knew? I don't even know who T Brown Jr. is. Is that Tony? Tony Brown? I don't even know who T Brown. Uh, it's Jr. Troy. Is. Troy. 
Troy Brown Jr. Whatever. <laughs> now we're like they they won on the road against OKC, who didn't have Shea Gilgis Alexander tonight. Um, but like I don't know, figured out, figured out. I, uh, I Ma- don't make it make Lakers. sense. <laughs> I don't want the Lakers to make it at all because I'm so annoyed by the Lakers narrative that I don't want to make him. I, I just. Not because I'm scared of them. I just don't like them. No, I don't well, want them to make it. I I would like the their ceiling is like the tenth tenth or ninth spot in the play in. That's their ceiling, absolutely. So you know, you want to give me the Lakers uh, at any point? I'll take I'll take a matchup against the Lakers in the playoffs. I don't care. Um, but yeah, it's just you know, it's just one of those things where I just I think they're going to struggle here down the stretch without consistency in the lineups you have to have consistency especially from your top players when you don't have anthony davis in and out or when you have lebron who's out for a while like maybe they could put it together the island of misfit toys out there in in la maybe they could do something but i'll tell you it's going to be a tough battle especially against the tight west who's everybody is kind of battling and jockeying for position within two or three games of each other from 10 all the way up through number four uh, in the West. So it's crazy. Uh, yeah, I don't trust them moving forward, but uh, yeah. Yeah. Ty, Ty, everyone knows the start of the Lakers is Austin Reeves. Austin Reeves dominated tonight, Chris. 19 points on five shots. It's hard to do. <laughs> I like Austin Reeves is kind of an interesting dude. I kind of like his fire, man. He's a, he's a fiery little kid, you know? Yeah. I mean, that's how we, yeah, yeah, uh, yeah. Uh, anyway, he's spicy. He's cool. Spicy. He's cool. Um, otherwise, we have um, Milwaukee Bucks co-owner, if, if you, in case you missed it. Uh, Mark Lashley has reached an agreement to sell a portion of the team to the Cleveland Browns owner, Jimmy and D. Haslam, at $3.5 billion valuation. By the way, his portion is massive. <laughs> like, his portion is huge. Um, so the deal, which represents uh, his portion of the Bucks, is approximately 25% of the team still pending league approval. Sources said, uh, if completed, it would be the second highest valuation ever for an NBA team being surpassed only by the $4 billion purchase of the Phoenix Suns by Matt Ishba uh, from Robert Sarver that was earlier on uh, this season. So... Um, Trivia: What sports team is his brother currently buying? What team is his brother currently buying? Uh, who? Um, Jimmy Haslam's brother. Haslam. Um, I am not sure. Actually, I'm trying to think. Uh, I. I don't know. I, mean, I don't know. Uh... Uh, I, I feel like it's in like Tennessee or something, Rack. So th- this this might be one of the least talked about sales in sports I've seen it's, in a while. Is it is it Preds? Is it Preds? It's the Preds. Yeah. Preds. Yes. I was like <laughs> least talked about slash. I feel like it's in Tennessee. It's gotta be the Preds. Yep. <laughs> Bill Haslam, former governor, is buying Nash is buying Nashville Predators. Interesting. Man, there's stuff going on all over the place with sales across uh, all of like all of these. So you know they're just a late, I mean, escalating prices of teams in the in NBA recent years. Joe Sy bought the Brooklyn Nets for 2.3 billion in 2019. That was preceded by um, the 2.2 billion dollar land of the Houston Rockets in 2017, um, and then Steve Ballmer paying two billion for the Clippers in 2014. So prices are just going up for these. And I'm looking at the Broncos sale and I'm just like, man, did the Waltons get a deal with like getting the Broncos at what they got no, them at? And no. then they got like a Chargers franchise. <laughs> get out of here. I can. Yeah, I just I just can't. I can't with you, man. I, it's like a trash franchise. I can't with you. Oh, my goodness. Get out of here. Uh, by the way, I'm looking at the NBA scoreboard tonight and I I don't know if you guys got an update. Sometimes you get breaking news updates. Um, and there was a bad beat alert. So the Cavaliers are getting blown out by the Boston Celtics. And 
They went on a 13 to 4 run over the final 2 minutes and 15 seconds against the Celtics to lose 117-113 as a 5-point underdog and just close the gap there. You want to know who was on the uh Cleveland Cavaliers at 5 and a half, Scotty? <laughs> I'm going to guess it was Wreck. He loves to gamble. It was yours truly. Oh, it was you. I'm kidding. Oh, of course I know it was you. It was yours truly, and I, I, I got the backdoor cover. I had the extra half point, though. I got it early on in the day, so I got it at five and a half. But I'll take it because that was not looking good. I parlayed that with the over and the uh, um, Xavier Providence game. I cashed in pretty good tonight, Scotty. I feel pretty good about it. All right. Uh, quick, we, uh, the, the Hawks hired, uh, Quinn Snyder as their coach. I think that's, uh, he's a good that coach. felt like it was in the works before they fired. It but, felt uh, like there were some weird things happening there. So, happening, but, uh, I don't know. That dude looks like he's always on his deathbed. Yeah, <laughs> it does actually. Um, all right. So let's see what else do we have in the chat, and then I'm gonna get to Jokic here because that's that. I might spend a little bit on him. Uh, stat padding in 1996, uh, Boy of the Lanjo Magic was an assist short of a triple double, up by 20 with 2.7 seconds to play. Orlando called timeout to try to get him the assist. Doug Collins, Pistons coach at the time, was pissed. The Pistons literally stood by the sideline with their hands on their hips and watched the last play. It was amazing to watch, and you know, like there is stat like. Talk about stat padding. So Nikola Jokic records his 100th triple double in a win. He is undefeated this season, Scotty, when he scores a triple double. And it's just, it, I mean, he is just throwing out crazy stats and he's doing it in a way that helps this team win overall. Now you get stuff in the media. Kendrick Perkins is probably the worst take on everything. Uh, obviously Kendrick Perkins does things to, but this feels like Kendrick Perkins isn't doing this to get clicks and views. It's like he truly believes that some of these things are real. Sometimes this one feels like he's like really trying to defend, but he came out today. It was like, there's only two guy, two other guys in history that have won uh, a couple MVPs back to back in this situation. No. No, only MVPs in general, and it's three guys since 1990. Yeah, and he he made a point of what do these three guys have in common? And it's Steve Nash, uh, Dirk Nowinski, and Jokic. Kind of hinting at the race card of oh, they're giving it to the white boys because they uh, they that's that's kind of the way it is when it comes to MVP voting for these types of guys. It it was not kind of hinted. It was. <laughs> What he said. And it was the most ridiculous take I think I've heard in probably ever. It's 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 a ridiculous take. And Nikola Jokic heard this and he actually responded in a locker room interview with local uh Vic Lombardi here, and he was like congratulating him after the game about hey, hundred tri- triple doubles, why does that feel? He was like I don't know. Uh, I mean, it, when you're stat padding, it's all feels, you know, it's it's all fine. And he was also oh, no, he said it's it's pretty easy when you're stat padding. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And he was like, oh, so you heard that? He was like, oh yeah, of course I heard it. And, which is actually kind of a surprising thing that he was like, that was the one surprising thing that he said was like, oh, you heard that? He was like, oh yeah, I heard it. So I mean, I feel like Jokic kind of beats his own drum when it comes to like. I just do my own thing. I don't care about MVPs. I don't care about all these things. And then, you know, you kind of get the vibe that he doesn't listen to the media and he doesn't like, he blocks out all those things. He just wants the team to win. And that's kind of his main focus, but he does have a little bit of a ear into the media and what, you know, people are saying about him. And maybe, I mean, I hope that's the case. Cause I hope that lights a fire under him to turn things just tur- just like, if there's any kind of bulletin board material, this is it for him, and he could, could use this and just absolutely just shut everybody up. The best thing that can happen to Jokic at the end of the season is he raises that trophy for the NBA title, and everybody who's talking about the fact that disrespect of he doesn't deserve to win this or he needs to do all these other things and prove himself, and he's not a top five guy, top ten guy. He's in and out of my yo-yo, out of my top ten. Shut him up. And put them in their place so we don't have to listen to the bullshit anymore. Now, I will say, 
you know, greatness is always hated, right? You know, everyone hates on greatness. And this is the fact that, you know, Jokic is, you know, as good as he is. What what makes it worse is everyone hates on him and he's the most humble dude ever. That's that's kind of, maybe that's the part that eats at me the most is like he could give a shit about MVP or about scoring. JJ Reddick had a great take about this this past week, and I thought he was spot on. He was like, dude, he's getting triple doubles and he's helping the team win. Uh, Richard Jefferson said, dude, if you're stat padding, let's say he is stat padding and that's a thing and it is this thing in the NBA. Stat pad all you want because right now you're undefeated when you stat pad and get a triple double. So I'll take a stat pad and triple double all day of the week. Scotty, I'm just so sick of it, man. I'm so sick of it. But you know what? This is the most love the Nuggets team has been in the media. Uh, not love. I guess most of the Nuggets have been in the media in the last what? <laughs> like, fit, like since I've been alive? <laughs> like, <laughs> Yeah, I'm, I'm most offended by three days ago, four days ago or whatever, prior to LeBron getting hurt and whatever. They literally, four guys were on ESPN and all agreed... All of them agreed the Lakers would beat the Nuggets so in a first round match. Oh, I'm just like, like the Lakers. The Lakers have lost more games than they've won this year. The lick and you have a two time MVP on the other side, probably three time MVP with an actual roster. Now, that's more offensive to me than what Kendrick Perkins said, because Kendrick Perkins is just an idiot. But four people, four people agreeing including Marcus Spears, who's like a Denver he's started a, his career. He's a beat writer. Yeah. I was like, what the hell are you guys doing? This is not no, stop. But Chris, I can I can easily easily take away like I can I mean Kendrick Perkins comment, I can undress in two seconds here. Okay? And it's just why it's so stupid. All right. Kendrick Perkins says Oh, oh, only white people since 1990 have won the MVP outside of the top 10 in scoring. So you talked about that. That was Nash. Nash finished 40th and 29th. Dirk finished 11th. Uh, kind of tied for 10th, but 11th. Um, and, and Jokic, 12th and 6th. So one of those two years, he actually finished in the top 10. Um, this year, he would not finish in the top 10. Um, because he has better team, better players around him to, to help him out. Um, in this same argument, in this same clip, Chris, if you watch it, he argues about how he, two years ago, wanted CP3 to be the MVP. He was like, why why wouldn't CP3 be the MVP? He We're moving goalposts. CP3 was the leader of the number one seed in the West. He was putting up good stats, whatever. Do you know where CP3 ranked in scoring that year, Chris? 50th. 50th. <laughs> it's, come on, man. What are we doing? His stats, CP3 stats that year where the same man... Kendrick Perkins, who's talking about racism now, argued that CP3 should be the MVP because he's on the number one seat. Okay? That same damn year, Chris Paul averaged... Hold on. Let me grab it real quick. He averaged 16 points. 16.4 points. So, eight less than Jokic. Um, He averaged... No, I'm sorry. Four, no, 14.7 points, 10.8 assists, so 0.8 assists more than Jokic, 14.7, which is 10 points less than Jokic, and he had 4.4 rebounds per game. So he was arguing for a guy that had, I don't know, 8 less rebounds, 10 less points, and 0.8 more assists two years ago to be the MVP, but now he's like, nah. Now that guy, we can't possibly, possibly. And you know why, Chris, the other important fact of this, he, st- he, 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 he took this back to 1990. You know why? You know why he went only back to 1990? Because Magic, Magic Johnson was 15th and 18th in scoring the two years he won MVPs in the 80s. So 
he sees pick cherry picked his information in his years. Cherry picked it. Is anyone debating magic right now? Is anyone is anyone debating like magic shouldn't have won MVP because he didn't score enough? No, hell no. Everyone, most people say magic is the best point guard of all time. So stop this. Don't don't make it about race. Don't make it about all these things. I just I don't know. He's it, an idiot. Uh, and here's the so Rex says here's the issue. You take USB and ser- uh, seriously. They start controversy. They're clearly doing their job. But I mean, it's it's Fox Sports. Fox Sports does it with you know Nick Wright and Chris Broussard Ooh. and all the. I mean, they're they're all they're they're all in that same camp. But here's the thing, you though. Know, you know who's in a different camp? The voters, because because the voters. Jokic is going to win MVP again. It's a done deal. Jokic will be three-time MVP. It's already over. And, and yeah, I mean, the voters know what's up. And here's the thing, too. Like, when it's all said and done, I mean, I, I heard this. Uh, the last thing I'll say about this, uh, and we'll, we can kind of move on to some NHL talk. But, you know, when it comes to this, it's like just because Jokic doesn't have – let, let's say he doesn't get a ring. Let's say he de- like I mean Charles Barkley doesn't have a ring or whatever. When it's all said and done, and you look at at the career, of, I mean, how are we measuring greatness anymore? Is it the rings? Is it strictly because of what you have on your finger, or is it your your greatness? Because I mean, people consider you know obviously Charles Barkley is one that we talk about uh, quite a bit of like oh he didn't ever get a ring, but you know he's still one of the greats and he's still. You know, what he put together. Then you talk about, you know, any, I mean, some of these other guys around the NBA that, that had insane seasons, their insane careers, and they just didn't ever win a, win a title. So you're going to say Nikola Jokic is a trash player because he never, ever wins a title when he's going to lead in all of these categories and things along those lines. Now, I, it, rings are always important, but we talk about how we overvalue rings. That's what we were talking about at the All Star break, right, Scotty? Overvaluing rings has changed the way we look at, you know, the All Star break. The uh, changes the way you look. That's why we're looking at. That's partly because of how these players moving around and jumping teams too, right? Damian Lillard was asked about this recently, about in an interview about, oh, well, you haven't jumped teams to go and. You know, you chase those rings. It's all about rings. Like we always focus on that, and that's the that's the end all be all, right? I mean, so Nikola Jokic is just a trash player, or anybody who doesn't win a ring that's that's as good as he is, or as good as they are. It's like, it's just a strange thing. I mean, that's what's contributing to all of these super teams and jumping from team to team because you're tr- like, you're you, what you're basically graded on when your career is all said and done. Is your rings? Yeah, I mean, show me the last time a team won an NBA title without two All Stars on their team. I know. I mean, it's clearly happened, but like, show me the last time. I'm thinking like Dallas with Dirk and maybe no one else. I I don't know. Maybe I don't know. Yeah. Like, no, to, I mean to discount Jokic because he hasn't won. When he literally, Jokic, forget, forget this year. He has never, never in his career played with another all-star. Ever. Ever. Think about that. Like, <laughs> never. Never. They made it a Western Conference Finals. Never played with an all-star. All right. Is, is, is Jamal Murray really good? I think so, but apparently the rest of the world doesn't. Do I think Michael Porter Jr. is really good? I think so, but the rest of the world doesn't. Nope. Do I think Aaron Gordon's really good? I do, but the rest of the world doesn't, so I don't care. This is the roster. This is it, Chris. This is it. If they stay healthy, this is it. Yeah. Uh, I can't wait to I can't wait to put all the the No, no Ty, Ty, I'm not talking about all time all stars. I'm talking the year they won. The year they won. Mm-hmm. I know Vince Car- Carter and Jason Kidd were obviously all stars. I don't know. Terry, maybe. I don't know about Jason Terry. But um, the year they won titles, every team had an all star on there. It's wild, man. Uh, but uh, this conversation will continue as the season goes on. But, you know, we are, are kind of getting down to the nitty gritty of the final stretch and we're going to see how these teams end up 
you know, jockey for position. By the way, the Nuggets have a fun, fun matchup on Friday night with the Big Grizzlies, one. and it's on national television, so that'll be fun. Big one with the yeah. uh, elite point guard in Memphis that likes to punch 17-year-old kids and flash guns to them. Uh, Yeah, the, uh, John Morant gets more and more... Oh, I don't even he know what sucks, to think. <laughs> um, I was going to say the 2004 Pistons, but I think Ben Wallace made the All-Star game that year. Yeah, I mean, Ben Wallace was in the All-Star uh, at one point. For sure. He, he would have made it this year. If not, Chauncey and Rip Hamilton that year. Or Rashid. I mean, they had like they were at least four deep. Yeah, Tyson Chandler. Um, but yeah, I mean, we'll we'll leave it there though. Uh, so we'll have an M- more NBA talk tomorrow. Uh, we'll be uh, live tomorrow night on Twitch for the one hour NBA special. We'll be releasing our power rankings for the week uh, in the NBA, and then also just going over some other storylines across the league that we didn't cover tonight. So make sure you guys tune in. Tomorrow night, same time, 9.30 Eastern, here on Twitch. 